there you were. You were having uh, having your tea. Okay, so Nonna, Mama, is it? Mama, Nonna goes Mama. Into, went into the kitchen. Um, Mama. Mama. She went into the kitchen. So that you're on your own with your little baby brother Stanley. Yeah. So yeah, when did you realise that that he was something was wrong with him? Um, I was about to eat the meatball and then he just choked on it. Yeah, so I what did he do? Did he start coughing or spluttering? What, how did you know that he was choking? Um, he was coughing and crying. He was crying. So what did you do? Smack him on the back three times. Three times you smacked him on the back. She's Breeze. She's seven <laughs> years of age. She's Breeze Martin. And she helps her parents look after her brothers. Her brothers are disabled. They're nine-year-old Coast and ten-year-old Blue. And they have autism and they require round-the-clock care. So she's here. Breeze is here with her mum, Becky. It's very, very lovely to meet you. And... Some very exciting, something very exciting has happened to you because you're a young carer and people got to hear about you. Tell me what your favourite comic is. The Beano. The Beano. So you wrote The Beano, didn't you, and said, could I come and maybe do something for your magazine um, or comic? What did they do? They made me a cartoon character and then put me in The Beano. So you're actually in The Beano. This happened on the 13th of June last year. Um, what, what do you remember? What can you tell us? We came home from school, normally come home, straight home, um, diverted through Camden, came home, pulled the car into the driveway, wasn't thinking about looking at anything, just pulled in, you know, you come in, you've got a child in the car, you just want to get into the house, mm -hmm. opened the garage, Didier came out of the car and went into the house by the garage. Um, as he went in, he went into the kitchen, I came out of the car and went to put something in the bin, which was at the top of the drive. Didier realised he'd forgotten his school bag. He came back out, and as he came ba back out, he was face to face with two large men, one with their arms around my neck, one with their hands over my face to stop me screaming. Our next guest is a six-year-old model from Wrexham who's landed a job in a new River Island campaign. Cora Bishop has Down syndrome and has been selected as part of a campaign which celebrates diversity. She's loving her new career and she's, uh, she's going to be modelling for us a little bit later on. She's here now to tell us all about uh, it alongside her parents, Cheryl <laughs> and Daniel. And it's, uh, and it's lovely to, uh, to, to meet so you all. So nice to meet you. You must be Welcome. so proud. Oh, yeah. We're incredibly proud, yeah. This week has been such a whirlwind, yeah. It's, uh... Well, it's a wonderful campaign so as we said so the river island celebrating 30 years of clothes and the campaign is labels are for clothes yes. um so it's really positive uh, this was her first audition yes first casting first job yeah how brilliant straight into the limelight yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Could> <laughs> incredible and so yeah. what was the shoot day like uh, the actual shoot was fantastic yeah it was really exciting they uh, they treated you like a princess didn't they yeah did yeah. they? And did you have your nails painted? And yeah, and they really hair looked done, and makeup done. Well, how exciting is it to finally be able to ride a bike? Um, it's really exciting to be riding a bike with all my friends. How hard was it for you when your friends were all starting to ride their bikes and you couldn't do it? It was quite hard because I couldn't hold the bike stable. So I couldn't ride the bike with my friends. Well, that's all changed now. Can you hold your hands up and let's see? Which is the one you had done first? Uh, I had, I had uh, uh, this one done this first. This one first. But how did you know how to do that? Who taught you how to do that? Um, St John's Ambulance. St John's Ambulance. And how did you meet with the St John's Ambulance people? Um, when I was at school, when I learned. So they came to your school and they taught you that. And I don't expect you thought you would ever use that so quickly, did you? Because it wasn't very long ago. Um, so when you realised something was wrong with Stanley and you hit him three times on the back, what happened? Um, the mate ball come out. Did you see it fly out? What happened? Um, it was better. It was better. <sighs> and then you just walked into the kitchen and what did you say to Mama? Stanley shaped on the meatball. And she had no idea that this had happened. Well, you are very, very clever. Well, so for you, you come out because you've forgotten something, you walk out and then you're confronted by this. What was going through your head? Um, when, when you think of it, you never think it's going to happen. It's, it, you never expect it. It could happen at any time. And then when you see it, you think, this can't be happening. You must have been terrified. Yeah. 
And you were, you're so bright, you must be so clever, because you sat there and you considered all of the options that you had in front of you. And you knew, I mean, th there was no point in going out there to go and save your mum, because it, it would be an impossible situation. Too, it would even be a very cre incredibly dangerous situation. You, as a mother, definitely didn't want him to do that. But you did something which was the perfect thing to do, which was to set the alarm off. Yeah. And why did you do that? Um, I did it because it was, one, it helped because it was the closest thing to me. Yeah. And it, I thought that calling the police, it would take too yeah. long. Yeah. So... So the noise, you thought, if I press, press the uh, panic button, press the alarm button, then that's going to scare them off. Yeah, so not only would I scare them off, the, the police would also come. And what does she do to help you look after Coast and Blue? How do, what does she do for her brothers? It's a very busy house we live in, and um, Coast particularly, who doesn't speak, um, and he's in a wheelchair pretty much full time, um, he's like a baby developmentally she just she has a real affinity with him and she just plays with him constantly don't you mm -hmm. um she makes him laugh if he's getting upset you help him get food or drink if he's hungry don't you mm -hmm. she likes wheeling around in his wheelchair when we're out and, and can, about can you tell then breeze if coast is having a moment where you can tell he's a bit unhappy or a bit distressed can you you feel that do you feel brother yeah and what do you do then when he's like that um, like, I go up to him and then um, he puts up his hands and then we start to clap and then he starts to really laugh so I tickle him and then he like, then he falls, mostly falls off the chair. <laughs> when, you, when you think of a movement, um, if it's not the app controlling, if it's you controlling, is there a delay between you thinking I want to do this mm. and the hand actually moving? No, all I have to do, if I wanted to use my fork, all I'll have to do is close it, yeah. and then open it, and wait for the thumb to twitch, that uh, that finger to twitch, and then if and then move it forward, and then it goes into the grip. And son, like could I ask you what that feels like? I mean, is that like absolutely brilliant? Is that fantastic? Is it like magic? Do you feel like Harry Potter, <laughs> or what? What you know? What what do you, what do you feel like um, having these hands fitted? It it feels like I'm just a normal boy, which hasn't which has lots of dreams. Thank you.